in the previous lecture we have started to deal with sommerfeld's quantum theory regarding the free electron theory of metals and uh, i have told you that uh, in sommerfeld's theory we treat the electron free just like in classical theory but uh, electron is treated like a quantum particle which obeys the fermi dirac statistics and polish exclusion principle and uh, for dealing the properties of metals on the basis of sommerfeld quantum theory we assume that uh, our free electron of metals that is valence electrons are confined in a potential box and that potential box may be considered as a one dimensional potential box and a three dimensional potential box but uh, <coughs> till now we have discussed only the case of one dimensional potential box and uh, after the completion of this problem we will again see uh, the free electron confined in a three dimensional potential box so in the first lecture on sommerfeld's theory related to the free electron gas in one dimensional potential box actually we have calculated two important uh, quantities first one was the energy eigen value of the free electron confined in a one dimensional potential box and another was its eigen function or wave function and you have seen that in that very problem we have assumed that uh, uh, <coughs> these are uh, x equal to 0 and x equal to l are the boundaries of this box one dimensional box and that x equal to 0 and x equal to l the potential function is infinite and between these two limits or you can say between 0 less or equal to x and this is less or equal to l this potential function is zero this potential function is zero so you can say that electron moves freely inside this potential box but as the height of this boundary uh, or height of this potential is infinite so electron cannot escape through this and so the electron is confined within the box actually applying schrodinger time independent equation and solving that equation equation we have obtained the energy eigen value and eigen function in my first lecture on this and so i have mentioned the result which was obtained in the previous lecture here because this result will be used here uh, in our present lecture we have seen that the allowed energy eigen values of the free electron is given by this formula E n equal to n square pi square h bar square over two m l square. Okay, or uh, you can write equivalently this expression as h bar square over two m times n pi over l whole square. And uh, here you can see that this n, which is known as principal quantum number, these are actually the numbers 1 2 3 and so on and you have also seen that n equal to 0 is not the allowed value of this principal quantum number n because you have seen in previous lecture that when we take n equal to 0 then for all values of x wave function is 0 and if wave function will be 0 everywhere it means electron is nowhere but we know that electron is confined inside the potential box so definitely the probability of finding of electron inside the box should be not zero and uh, therefore uh, psi can not be zero inside this box okay only at a certain point this can be zero but uh, everywhere it cannot be zero and so this value n equal to zero was restricted and only the accepted value of n were 1 2 3 and so on and from this result you can see that this energy eigen value en varies with n square and you can see the variation of this energy eigen value en in against of the principal quantum number n this is just a parabolic curve because this equation is just equivalent to y equal to 4ax square 
which represents a parabola so the graphical plot of en in against of n is almost a parabola although n has not continuous value but uh, this energy eigen value varies almost continuously because uh, the unit by which it increases on increasing n that is very small and so uh, although in a strict sense we say that the energy eigen value of this free electron is discrete but when you will take the practical value you will see that uh, the difference between two successive values is so small that in practical life we can take it almost continuous and so in this figure uh, a continuous curve has been shown although it is not absolutely correct okay now using this uh, energy eigen value expression in our present lecture our aim is to find two very important quantities and those two important quantities are what first one is fermi energy and another is total energy of all the electrons inside a solid okay so what is this fermi energy what is fermi level and how it can be calculated in case of the one dimensional potential electron in one dimensional potential box or you can say in case of one dimensional crystal we will see in this lecture actually this lecture is this concept is very important for a student preparing for the civil services examination taking physics as an optional subject because in that particular examination such type of question is uh, invariably asked okay so uh, take this lecture very seriously because it is equally important for university examination and competitive examination both okay so now let us first of all try to know about the fermi energy and its calculation okay actually uh, when you asked uh, what is fermi energy let us say uh, that you are facing an interview and the interviewer asked you what what do you mean by fermi energy how you can define in fact fermi energy is defined as the maximum energy of electron possessed in a metal at zero kelvin temperature it means the highest energy or the highest energy level in which electron can be found at zero kelvin temperature in a metal that is called fermi level and the energy of electron uh, occupied in that fermi level is called fermi energy so you can say that the top most field energy level at zero kelvin temperature or you can say absolute zero temperature or you can also say that when our uh, specimen is in ground state so when the specimen is in ground state then the top most field level it means uh, above that level all levels will be empty and below that level all levels will be occupied by the electron so it is called topmost energy level which is occupied by the electron at zero kelvin temperature in a metal that is called fermi level and uh, and the energy corresponding to this level is called fermi level energy and it is de denoted by this symbol ef okay so fermi energy is the highest energy or the you can say the maximum energy of electron in a metal at zero kelvin temperature in other words you can say but how this is defined how we can explain it and how we can get an expression for measure the fermi energy in case of one dimensional crystal we will see now okay so now let us consider a solid specimen of a metal and uh, in that specimen there are n electrons and uh, our problem is what our problem is how to accommodate these n electrons in different energy levels 
how these n electrons can be accommodated okay now remember we are talking uh, this pro this problem in terms of sommerfeld theory in which electron was treated as a quantum particle owing the fermi dirac statistics and pauli exclusion principle because actually electrons are fermions and you know if electrons are fermions they must obey pauli exclusion principle and what is this pauli exclusion principle you definitely have an idea of this pauli exclusion principle actually this pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons in a solid can be in same quantum state in other words you can say that no two electrons in a system can have all the quantum numbers identical because quantum numbers are the parameters to decide the quantum state so no two electrons can have all the quantum numbers identical according to this uh, pauli exclusion principle okay in other words you can also say that in a particular quantum state there can be one and only one electron in the same quantum state or in same uh, you can say in the same orbital only one electron can remain okay this is uh, in a, this is the pauli exclusion principle so taking this pauli exclusion principle under account now we will try to find how we can accommodate these n electrons into the different energy levels okay actually when you talk about a solid in case of solid the conduction electron or you can say the free electron or the valence electrons are characterized by two quantum numbers only two quantum numbers mark it the first one is denoted by the symbol n and this is called principal quantum number and another is ms this is called magnetic spin quantum number actually the principal quantum number n have has value 1 2 3 4 and that represents the number of energy levels n equal to 1 means first energy level n equal to 2 means second energy level and so on and this ms which is called uh, magnetic spin quantum number actually electron has two spin states one is called up state and another is called down state the up state is assigned by a value plus 1 by 2 so when ms is equal to plus half that means spin is up and the down state down <coughs> state of the spin is denoted by a value minus half for ms so ms equal have two values first one is plus half another is minus half when you say ms equal to plus 1 by 2 that represents the up spin state and uh, when you write ms equal to minus half that is for the down spin state so according to spin orientation as i have mentioned it here you can see ms can have only two values first one is plus half and another is minus half and plus half is in general written for the up state and minus half for the down state okay so now any quantum state let us say this is a quantum state okay and in this quantum state sorry this is an energy level not a quantum state now in this energy level at most two electrons can accommodate mark it i am talking about energy level not about quantum state so our first electron if it is in up spin state then the second electron will be in down quantum down spin state for this ms is equal to half and for this ms is equal to minus half 
हियर दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर इन सेम एनर्जी लेवल बट नॉट इन सेम क्वांटम स्टेट क्वांटम स्टेट्स कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर डिफरेंट ओके ऑल दो एन विल बी सेम फॉर बोथ द इलेक्ट्रॉन लेट अस से एन इज इक्वल टू वन और एन इक्वल टू टू और एन इक्वल टू थ्री देन एन दिस प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर इज सेम फॉर दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बट एम एस आर एम एस इज नॉट सेम फॉर वन इलेक्ट्रॉन एम एस इज प्लस हाफ फॉर एनदर इलेक्ट्रॉन इज इट इज माइनस हाफ ओके सो दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर नॉट इन द सेम ऑर्बिटल और नॉट इन द सेम क्वांटम स्टेट ओके सो इन दिस वे यू कैन सी दैट एक्चुअली ईच एनर्जी लेवल कैन एकोमोडेट टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ईच एनर्जी लेवल Each energy level can accommodate or can possess two electrons. One electron will have up spin, and another will have down spin. This is maximum value. If there is no not available number of electron now, then an energy level may contain only one electron. But at most, अधिक से अधिक कोई भी जो एनर्जी लेवल है वह ज्यादा से ज्यादा दो इलेक्ट्रॉन को कंटेन कर सकता है मार्केट ओके बट बोथ ऑफ देम विल बी इन द सेम एनर्जी लेवल बट नॉट इन सेम क्वांटम स्टेट नॉट इन सेम ऑर्बिटल यू कैन से सो आई हैव रिटन इट हियर दस एन ऑर्बिटल और क्वांटम स्टेट रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय द क्वांटम नंबर एन कैन अकोमोडेट टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स At most, you can should write at most maximum. At most, two electrons, one with a spin up or m s equal to plus half, and other with a spin down or m s equal to minus half. It means each energy level has two quantum states. Mark it. Each energy level has how many quantum states? Two quantum states. and in other words you can also say that each energy level is doubly degenerate doubly degenerate it means uh, each energy level is doubly degenerate it degeneracy is two because in each energy level there are two quantum states okay maximum two quantum states so how we can accommodate uh, n electrons uh, in a solid in different energy levels taking this pauli exclusion principle and idea of a spin under a count now we will explain it by uh, a proper example first of all i am taking a simple example let us consider there is a solid in which there are six electrons or you can say conduction electrons and the solid is at zero kelvin temperature that is it is in ground state okay so in ground state how these six electron can be distributed into the different energy levels now we will see it let us see this is your first energy level and first energy level you know it is marked by the principal quantum number n equal to 1 now in this first energy level there will be two electrons but both electrons will be in a different quantum state how because this is your first electron and this is in up spin state see this and this is your second electron and this is in down spin state so two electrons have been accommodated in this first energy level similarly in the second energy level 2 there are two electrons one is with up spin other is with down spin okay now in third energy level that is for n equal to 3 again this level will accommodate two electrons one with up spin and other with down spin so in this way the six electrons you can see are accommodated in the first three energy levels that is in n equal to 1 n equal to 2 and n equal to 3 so all the energy levels 
for which n is less or equal to 3 all the energy levels are completely filled because any energy level cannot accommodate more than two electrons okay so all these three energy levels are completely filled so i have marked here that these are filled levels okay but see the energy levels n equal to 4 n equal to 5 n equal to 6 and so on are there any electron in these energy levels answer is no because our solid has only six electrons so all the energy levels for which n is equal to or greater than four all these energy levels are empty unoccupied these are unoccupied energy levels okay but the energy levels for which n is less or equal to 3, they are occupied energy levels, they are occupied by the electron at 0 Kelvin temperature. So if now I will ask you, what is the highest energy level which is occupied by the electron at 0 Kelvin temperature or in ground state of the solid? You can easily say that this n equal to 3 this is the highest energy level which is occupied by the electron at 0 Kelvin temperature. And according to the definition of Fermi level, you have learnt in the beginning of the, uh, this idea, that the topmost level which is, which is occupied by the electron at 0 Kelvin temperature, that is called Fermi level. So in this proper example, this n equal to 3 energy level is the Fermi energy level. This is your Fermi energy level. Fermi energy level. Fermi level. Okay. Uh, and so, the principal quantum number n is now denoted by for this energy level, the, which is called Fermi level, by the symbol nf. So, in this example, nf is equal to 3. And the energy of the electron corresponding to this energy level, that is the energy of electron found in this Fermi level, that is called Fermi energy. So, you know, when n is 3, then we denote the energy eigenvalue by the symbol E3. So, in this present example, E3 is nothing, this is simply the Fermi energy. Okay? So, uh, you can say in this example that this EF which is equal to E3 and according to the energy eigenvalue formula, you can write it that this is 9 square pi square h bar square over 2 ml square. This is Fermi energy. So, I hope uh, the idea of the Fermi level and Fermi energy in case of one dimensional crystal by taking this simple example it will be now very clear to you. Yes or no? definitely we have to say yes but now we will generalize this result in this example i have considered a proper example of uh, total six electrons okay and six is an even number okay now we will generalize this result in this way for general result now let us consider there are n electrons in our solid Capital N is the number of total electrons found in our solid which have to be accommodated in different energy levels or on the line. Okay? You can see. Now, there, there will be actually two cases. This N which represents the number of electrons that number may be even or that may be odd. So, first of all, we are considering that this n is an even number. Just in this example, 6 was an even number. So, n is an even number. See this. When the total number of electrons were 6, then you have seen that all the 6 electrons have been accommodated in the first 3 energy levels. That is, uh, uh, in the energy levels n equal to 1, n equal to 2, and n equal to 3. 
So in this example, you can say that this n, which is equal to 3, that is simply equal to 6 divided by 2, because each level can accommodate two electrons. So the high number of highest energy level in this case will be simply half of the total number of electrons. So as total number of electrons is n, so in this case the value of nf that is the principal quantum number for the Fermi level will be what? That will be simply equal to n over 2. You have seen just. So nf is equal to n by 2. Now once you know the principal quantum number, what will be the energy of electron when n is equal to nf? You can easily find that value by using the result which I have mentioned it here. And you have learnt this result in your previous lecture. So, when you will take n equal to nf, then this energy En will be equal to Ef, which is called Fermi energy. So, simply replacing n by nf in this equation A, you can obtain the value of the Fermi energy in case of a solid in which the total number of electrons is even. Okay. So, Ef from that result can be given like this. This is h bar square over 2m times there where n square pi square over l square. You can see I have written nf instead of n here. And uh, this can be written like this. This is h bar square over 2m. But you have seen that this nf is equal to n over 2. So, substituting n over 2 now you can write that Ef is equal to h, square, h bar square over 2m times n pi divided by 12 whole square. So this is the expression for the Fermi energy in case of uh, one dimensional crystal market. Here length is uh, present here. So this is the result for Fermi energy in case of one dimensional crystal. When we will deal with the problem of free electron gas in 3D box, 3-dimensional potential box. Then, in the expression of Fermi energy at the place of this length L, there will be actually volume. So, uh, what is the expression for Fermi energy? That depends in, on the fact that your crystal is 1-dimensional or 3-dimensional. And we will learn about uh, we will learn both of these. At present, we are learning about the crystal, one-dimensional one crystal. But in our forthcoming lecture, we will discuss in very detail the problem of three-dimensional crystal. Okay? And then we will again see the expression for this Fermi energy. Okay? Now, uh, mark it. As the total number of electron is L n and the line on which these total number of electrons are distributed that has a length L. So on L length there are n electrons and so on unit length what will be the number of electrons? That will be n over L. So this n over L which is which I have denoted by the symbol n0 that represents the number of electrons per unit length. So, instead of n by L in this equation B, you can write n0. So, the expression for Fermi energy in case of one dimensional crystal can be written like this. This Ef is equal to n naught square pi square h bar square over 8m. You can equivalently write this expression too. Okay? Now, uh, <coughs> we will clarify our idea by taking a proper example. Let us consider there is a solid in, in, in which this n by L which represents the number of electrons on unit length that is equal to 0 0.5 electrons per angstrom. And when you will actually convert this value in electrons per meter 
this will be 5 into 10 to the power 9. How? Because this will be 0 0.5 electrons per angstrom. But one angstrom is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So this will be actually 5 into 10 to the power 9 electrons per meter. Okay. So taking n by l equal to 5 into 10 to the power 9 electrons per meter and using this formula b you can easily find the value of ef here m is mass of the electron which you know h bar is planck's constant which is h by 2 and you know the value of planck's constant so substituting all those values when you will simplify you will get this I have not simplified that. I have written the value directly. EF you will get 3.7 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule. And if you will convert this joule into electron volt, mm. you have to divide by this 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19, which is charge of an electron. And so, in electron volt unit, this EF is equal to 2.4 electron. Okay. So, uh, you can see that uh, we can accommodate this 5 into 10 to the power 9 electrons on 1 meter length of the line. <coughs> the, then, energy of the topmost electron would be 2.4 electron volt. Maximum energy of the electron will be 2.4 electron. So I hope uh, this calculation was very easy and very interesting. So definitely you have understand. Now we will see what will happen or what will be the expression for this Fermi energy when the total number of electrons this capital N in our solid is odd not even. Okay. You will see finally that uh, there is no difference in the final result for Fermi energy. But let us try to understand this. Actually, uh, if uh, we uh, let us uh, consider a proper example. As you have seen, uh, if we consider there are uh, in fact uh, six electrons, then how these electrons are distributed in different energy levels. Now let us consider there are seven electrons. Then you know two electrons will be in your first energy level. Again, two electrons will be in your second energy level. Again, the two electrons will be in your third elect energy level with opposite spins. But as I have considered that now there are seven electrons, not six. So now only one electron remains unpaired and that unpaired electron will be now in level n equal to 4 and n equal to 5, n equal to 6, all these energy levels that is the energy levels a above n equal to 4 are empty, these will be empty and below this n equal to 4 n less or equal to 4 all ele energy levels are occupied by the electrons although the first three energy levels are completely filled but the fourth level is partially filled fourth level is partially filled okay so in this case this partially filled energy level is the fermi level partially filled energy level this is fermi level okay it means the highest occupied energy level that highest occupied energy level may be completely filled by two electrons or it may be partially filled by one electron but this is the fermi level and how this fermi level can be obtained you can see since here the total number of electron is 7. So, and the Fermi level will be 4. So, how this 4 will be obtained? This will be simply 7 plus 1 divided by 2. 
So in this case, you can say that if there are n total number of electrons and n is odd, then n minus 1 divided by 2 level, each level will have 2 electrons with opposite spins. And n plus 1 divided by 2 level will have only one unpaired electron. For, uh, in this example, this up to this third energy level, all are completely filled. But n equal to 4 level is accommodated by only one unpaired electron. So the Fermi level in, uh, in this case is n equal to nf and that nf is equal to n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. So if an n will be odd, then nf is equal to n plus 1 divided by 2. When n is even, then nf you have seen this is n by 2, but in case of odd n, this nf is equal to n plus 1 over 2. So what will be now the Fermi energy? Fermi energy you know, this is energy corresponding to the Fermi level. So in the expression of energy, now at the place of quantum number n, we will write nf and the value of nf will be equal to n plus 1 and divided by 2. So you can see ef will be equal to h bar square over 2m times nf pi over l whole square. But nf in this case is n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. But as uh, you have seen in this proper example, that in practice, this total number of electrons in a solid is very large. It is much, much greater than 1. So when you will add this 1 in this capital N, it will make no, uh, not a very diff uh, appreci appreciable difference. This n plus 1 will be almost equal to n because 1 is negligibly small in comparison to n in practice. So in general, in practice, we take n much greater than 1 and therefore you can write the expression Ef like this h bar square over 2m times n pi over 12 whole square. Okay. So, <clears throat> actually, you can see there is no difference in the expression for the Fermi energy when n is even. This equation B represents the Fermi energy in case of even number of electrons. And this E represents uh, the expression for odd number of electrons, but both are almost same. So, don't be bothered that n is either uh, uh, even or either odd. Okay, Fermi level is the highest occupied level. That highest occupied level may contain two electrons or it may contain only one electron. It does not matter. Okay. So in this way, we have developed the idea of Fermi level and I hope uh, now you have a clear cut concept of this Fermi level and Fermi energy in your mind. Mind it. This is the highest energy of electron possessed by, elect by the electron at zero Kelvin temperature. Mark it. Classically, at zero Kelvin temperature, energy of electron should be zero. But according to quantum mechanics, even at zero Kelvin temperature, the electron ha the electron's energy is not zero. But it varies. Uh, the energy lowest in this n equal to one level, then it is in n equal to 2 then in n equal in this way in this direction energy increases and the highest energy which is the which the highest energy of the electron at zero kelvin temperature is called the fermi energy okay and this can be understood only by quantum mechanics because according to classical kinetic theory at absolute zero temperature the energy becomes zero but here energy of electron is not zero but it varies from uh, <coughs> this e1 to ef e1 means when n equal to 1 e1 to ef its energy varies okay 
so now now our aim is to find the calculation of the total energy of the electron in a solid as you have considered that in a specimen of solid there are n electrons so what is the total energy of these n electrons because you know these n electrons are distributed in different energy levels and in different energy levels electrons have different energy okay so if your aim is to find uh, the total energy of these electrons simply you have to sum up the energy of each and every electron when we will add the energy of all electrons then we will get actually the total energy of electron but uh, mark uh, it you know in any energy level there are two electrons if it is completely filled okay so if we consider that uh, there is a system of uh, there is a solid containing n electrons and n is even n is what n is even mark it then there will be n by 2 energy levels in which every energy level will accommodate two electrons agar kaho ki total electron n hai aur n even hai man lo 10 hai to panch level hoga jisme pratyek level mein do do electron hoga okay to to in present example we are considering that this n is actually an even number okay so you can say there will be n by 2 levels in which electrons are distributed and in each level there are two electrons but can you say that in a particular energy level let us say n equal to 1 the energy of that these two electrons which are found in this energy level are different or same answer is same because you know energy of this electron will be e1 and energy of this electron will be also e1 similarly in n equal to 2 level energy of both electrons will be same and that will be e2 e2 and similarly in third energy level energy of both electrons will be will be same so if you want to sum up the energy of all the electrons how you can actually obtain it you can uh, obtain like this 2e1 okay plus 2e2 plus 2e3 and so on yes or no because uh, e1 is the energy of two electron e2 is the energy of three two electrons e3 is the energy of two electrons so this will be two times e1 plus e2 plus so on okay now the total number of energy levels is n by 2 so you can see that this will be 2 times sum of this total energy where n will run from 1 to n by 2 capital n by 2 so i have written it here that if e not is the total energy of the electrons then this will be equal to 2 times summation over n 1 to n by 2 en okay but uh, we have seen that uh, this en is equal to what en is equal to what now you can see i have mentioned it here that this factor 2 appears because each level contains two electrons with equal energy okay now we will uh, write the expression for this energy eigen value en you have seen that this en is equal to what this is h bar square over 2m okay into n pi over l whole square okay here n varies so you can write e not equal to 2 times h bar square over 2m times pi over l whole square and summation 
n square where n runs from 1 to capital n by 2 okay now finding the value of this uh, summation n square you can find the total energy of the electron so now let us try to find this n square let us say this n uh, e, uh, runs from 1 to s that is s is the value of n for the fermi level because up to fermi level electrons are found okay but you have definitely studied in your course on algebra in plus 2 level a chapter sequence and series where we study the formula for the sum of the square of first n natural numbers okay so sum of the <coughs> square of first s natural numbers here L upper limit is s so when you will write summation n square where n runs from 1 to s then you know the formula is s into s plus 1 into 2s plus 1 divided by 6 okay and uh, when you will multiply this s plus 1 by 2s plus 1 your result will be this you can say check it and so uh, this is equal to 1 over 6 times s into 2s square plus 3s plus 1 but if we consider the case s is greater or equal to 1 then in comparison to this s square we can neglect this 3s plus 1 okay because s is actually in practice very much greater than 1 so in comparison to this first term we can neglect the last two terms so approximately you can say this is 1 over 6 times s times 2s square and so this will be almost equal to s cube by 3 so this uh, summation n square this is equal to s cube over 3 okay and so now s cube you know s is equal to capital n divided by 2 so this summation n 1 to n by 2 up to n by 2 n square this is 1 by 3 s cube but s is equal to n by 2 so this is n by 2 whole cube so in this way you have calculated the value of this summation now let us substitute this value in this equation one where total energy e naught of the total electrons have been defined okay so substituting this value we can see e naught is equal to 2 times h bar square over 2m pi over l whole square times 1 over 3 n by 2 whole cube okay and uh, now uh, write this in a particular fashion like this this is e naught 1 by 3 uh, h bar square over 2m here there is n cube by 2 cube 1 2 is cancelled by this so there will be 2 a square now okay and uh, as there is n cube but here inside this bracket i have written n and uh, i have put it a square so one n left here okay but uh, see this expression h bar square over 2m times n pi over 12 whole square now you can see the expression for the fermi energy see this expression you can see this expression uh, represents the Fermi energy EF. So in that equation and the place of this factor which I have underlined, you can write EF. This is Fermi energy. So the total energy of electron in our solid is at, uh, in fact in ground state or at 0 Kelvin temperature, this is 1 over 3 N times EF. 1 over 3 n times ef okay so this is a very remarkable result because i have told you according to classical physics or according to classical uh, kinetic theory of gases 
at absolute zero temperature total energy of these electrons should be zero but when we apply quantum mechanics we find that the total energy is not zero but it is in fact 1 over 3 n times ef actually here you know energy of electron varies from e1 e2 up to ef up to ef above this level there is no electron so actually total energy means uh, sum of the energy of the all electrons and that is not zero even at zero kelvin temperature mark it now when you will divide this total energy e naught by the total number of electrons what you will get you will get the average kinetic energy of an electron so this uh, symbol e e inside this angular bracket uh, represent the average kinetic energy average kinetic energy of electron it is also a very remarkable result according to classical physics or classical kinetic theory of gases you know that at absolute zero temperature the average translational kinetic energy of a gas molecule is zero because that is 3 by 2 kt but when t is zero that will be zero but you can see when we treat the problem quantum mechanically then we find that the average translational kinetic energy of an electron even at zero kelvin temperature is not zero but it is one third of the fermi energy this is a very remarkable fact and very important question for your objective type questions so remember it average translational kinetic energy per electron even at zero kelvin temperature is one third of the fermi energy so i have mentioned it here you can see thus for one dimensional crystal the average kinetic energy of electron in the ground state ground state means at zero kelvin temperature is one third of the fermi energy so i hope uh, this session wa have been definitely interesting for you and you have definitely enjoyed so uh, go through the whole video uh, note down in your notebook and you will then uh, we will be very happy that a very good notes is now for you okay thank you very much